Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost, you're watching Provost Park Pass, and today I'm gonna do Secrets Revealed on the submarine voyage. What? Do you know why they blow air on the submarine voyage? It's not for the reason you think. Let's find out. Now, when I was going through all the videos we've done in the past, I noticed we've never done a Secrets Revealed for Nemo's Finding Nemo submarine voyage. We've never even had a request for it. But I was like, we gotta do it. And sometimes when I do an attraction, there's not a lot of history, or so just kind of whatever. This one I'm super excited because there is a ton of history on this attraction. Lots of cool things. Let's get into it. Finding Nemo's submarine voyage. Now that is the most important sub you can see. It's called the Nautilus. See the name there, Nautilus? It's the only sub name that hasn't changed. Throughout the years, they've had a, whole, a bunch of different subs that were like Sea Wolf or whatever. The Nautilus has remained the exact same and that was a submarine that was christened. When the ride first opened, the Nautilus was a submarine that was christened. The reason was, the Nautilus was the very first ever nuclear powered submarine. And it was the first sub to go completely under Antarctica. When this ride opened here in 1959, the wife of the engineer who was in charge, uh, who was really on the Nautilus sub, she's the one that christened it here on opening day. Every other name here has been changed, but the Nautilus, they've not changed for the historic significance of that ride. There are eight submarines. You can see the Argonaut right there is 807. That's the eighth, uh, eighth submarine in this particular order. So they, Whatever the first number is, that's the number. So it all ended in 07, because that's the year that this ride reopened was in 2007. Here comes our this submarine right here. You'll notice there's a pilot right there, right there at the very beginning. That pilot really is driving, pilot or skipper, I'm not sure. That pilot really is actually driving the submarine. The pilot stands on a scale when they're driving it, so a weighted scale. It's called a dead man switch. I know, very morbid, but the reason is, is if, they, if the pilot had a problem and fell down, the submarine will automatically come to a stop because they're really piloting it. They don't want the submarine to keep going around and running into another submarine, so they have what's called a dead man switch. It's just a scale that they stand on to let them know that person is standing there. If they fall down, then the sub's gonna stop. Number four, the Mariner. It's a little bit of a slow loader. You can see that they're gonna lower the this, like gangway for the people to get in and out. If you have to climb up and down steps to get in and out, and so if that's something you don't feel comfortable about with, comfortable with, don't worry, I'll show you how you can still ride this attraction a little bit later on in this video. There she's gonna put the gangway, they're gonna lift up the, the hatch and they're gonna lower the gangway so people can get in and out of the submarine. It's a little narrow. Walk down the stairs. The submarine holds 40 people. 20 on each side. These are spring loaded chairs. You sit right there and pull the chair down and sit right down in it. Now, when you're sitting down, you'll notice that right here there's a little plug, and this plug is blowing air. You feel a bunch of cold air coming out. Most people think that that's being blown on there to keep the windows so they don't fog up. Ah, that's not really true. The reason for the wind, the air being blown on the window is it reduces motion sickness and helps people who might have claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. If you're claustrophobic and you put your face in that little porthole and you feel that cold wind blowing your face, mm -hmm. it reduces anxiety and makes you feel, uh, you, it so the claustrophobia kind of passes. And also it makes it so you don't feel so motion sick. So that's the real reason. Do you believe that? It's, so, it's to fight claustrophobia for people. So now, depending where you sit, you'll see different things when you go through. It's a, good, it's, a good, it's a good show no matter where you're sitting. Sometimes you might see Nemo or you might see his friends. Also, another thing to listen for is every single human on this attraction, they have an Australian accent. It was a human Australian accent. Just close the hatch. Let's go for the ride. G'day. This is the captain speaking. Now that we're on the way, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Stand by to dive. Let's take it down. Dive. 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 There's not 
much to see on the surface of the ocean, but here below lies a strange and mysterious world filled with diverse creatures, ancient civilization, hidden for centuries beneath the ocean. If you look at the back of his mask, you can see it says uh, P. Sherman Bobby Way. And there's the Tiki God. Now this is the part where we're actually going out of the lagoon into a building Notice it gets a little bit darker because we're now inside. Set course to seven zero degrees slow loader. Um, it takes a long time to load people on and people out. So it's just be aware that it can take a while. So yeah, that's just how it is though. When the attraction first reopened in 2007, with the Finding Nemo ride, it was very popular. And the queue line wrapped all the way around the lagoon. And they have this game in the queue line, Find Nemo. They have these hidden Nemos. They removed all those Nemos, except I know where two of them are. The queue used to go all the way around this lagoon area here, and they had all these little Finding Nemo's, these little hidden Nemo's, and so they've left two of them. While we're waiting to take a look at this, you're gonna see right there, those are the seagulls. And P. 
periodically they move and they'll say, mine, 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 mine. My good friend, Jess Harnell, he actually provided the voice for those seagulls. And he also did the voice here for Marlin. Uh, Albert Brooks, who provides the voice in the movie, didn't reprise his role here for the attraction. So Jess came in and stepped in and did that. You'll notice right there where that, where that waterfall is, that's where you are entering inside a building. It's an all inside building where it goes along a track in there on the inside of the building. Let's go find this other Marlin. I mean, Nemo. All right, so the Finding Nemo's, the, the lines go really long and people do this game where they're trying to find the Nemo's. They were all painted. They removed all of them but two. There are two left. One of them's pretty obvious. One of them's really hard to see. But let me try right, so if you walk all the way back here to the corner, there's Autopia, right where the corner of this fence is. By the way, it's three different fences. One, two, three. But if you look right here, you can kind of see the old outline of a Nemo on the rock. Now, most of them were painted. They just got rid of the paint. This one was a little bit etched. So you kind of see this one. It's a little bit, a little finding Nemo right there. All right, now let me show you where the other one is. This one's a lot easier to see. You gotta walk down here, past the monorail area. The attraction when it first opened was so popular that people, the line would extend all the way down here to uh, underneath the monorail. And so in order to entertain people, they would have these hidden Nemo's. And we're gonna look at that right there. And this is where the line would wrap around and people could see this Nemo's etched in the wood. They painted over it, but you can still see it. Wow remnants of a bygone era so a lot of times people you've heard of the e-ticket attraction right e-ticket attraction is a ticket they used to give for the very best attractions a lot of people mistakenly believe that e-tickets were available on the opening day of 1955 that's not the case the e-ticket wasn't in, uh, introduced to us until 1959 and the reason was is because the Matterhorn opened Submarine Voyage opened and the monorail all opened in 1959. It's the first big expansion, uh, expansion of Disneyland. These, these three attractions, the monorail, the Matterhorn, and the submarine voyage were so popular that they created the brand new e-ticket. There's our, uh, I, I don't know if they call it a skipper or a pilot and a submarine. Uh, there he is, he gave us a little wave. This is the Neptune going on in. And you'll see that they come, this is where you board, you come through on this little trail. And you can see all these little bubbles there. Those are the bubbles that it makes it look like you're diving, particularly that area right there. Now, technically, did you know they're not even really submarines? They're classified as boats because they not they do not completely submerge underwater. So that makes them a boat. That's right. <laughs> now there's Hank the octopus, but in the movie he only has seven tentacles. That's right, seven. Uh, he must have lost one of his arms. Uh, that was, this is the most recent addition to uh, Finding Nemo. And uh, do you guys know how many uh, tickles it takes to make an octopus laugh? Two to three. They're very ticklish, very ticklish. Yeah, about two to three. That's all it takes. Some of you thought I was going to say ten tickles. But I didn't. But I didn't. But speaking of animals, when the submarine voyage first opened in 1959, they actually had dogs on board the submarines. Yeah, they were subwoofers. <laughs> there goes our there goes our friendly. That's the Nautilus. They're waving. <laughs> that's the most important sub. You notice it's a one. It's number one of the fleet of 2007. Eight subs in the fleet. That's the only one that's never changed name. The Nautilus. Here comes the second submarine. By the way, the submarines are 52 feet long. They're 52 feet long. Interesting fact, the lagoon and the ride, it has nine million gallons of water in it. Nine million gallons of water. How much water is that? Well, if I drink one gallon a day, it would take me nine million days. When they, they just did a refurbishment a little while ago, they drained all the water out. And you notice they have some bright, colored coral when you ride the attraction well the, yeah, the problem is the paint it wears after water after a while so what they use they use 30 that's right 30 tons of recycled glass they crush the they crush the glass up and then put it in the coral to make the coral out of it because that way it doesn't really have to be repainted yeah it's just crushed glass 
Now, what if you have like a mobility issue or maybe a little worried about claustrophobia? Can you still ride a traction? Absolutely, 100% you can. I'll show you how to do that right now. And to do this, you just come through the exit. You'll be greeted by a cast member and you just tell them you want to do the outpost. And if you can't remember, say outpost, just say, I would like to do the ride that without getting a submarine and they'll take care of you. So the cast member just walked me right down here. This is the outpost right here. You'll notice the light is red on it. That means it's in use. When it clears out, the light will turn green and they'll have you go right inside. Anybody can use this. Oh, both lights are on, green and red. So I think it means it's almost done. The light just turned green, so they're about to let me in. Is I here I am with amazing cast member Nicholas, and he's. I'm gonna show you what he showed me, and this is amazing. So we have to show you here inside the outpost. All right. So right over here, this is in locker. Was at 105. 105, right here. Yes. That is their hidden Mickey. Little, you can see a little sweatshirt with hidden Mickey on it. And then 110. Yes. This is the cast when they reopened it of 2007. There's the opening crew that you can see a photo of them all in there of the opening uh, day. And then, of course, it was shut down, and they reopened it again in 2022. And there they are, right there. And fun fact, I'm actually in this picture. You're somewhere. in this photo? I'm in this photo somewhere. I'm right in the corner somewhere there. It's hard to, it's hard to, hard see, to see right with the camera. But there we go, yeah. Right there. So if you come at some point by yourself, you can take a look for me. Take a look right there. And this is the best. In Locker 119, we don't know why, but you guys, there's Tarzan. Yeah. A little shout out to Tarzan. Yeah, Disney's Tarzan, an excellent film. Yes, great it is an excellent film. film. Great film, great film, Holland soundtrack, so. I love it. Thing. Nicholas, I don't know if you knew this though, when the submarines first opened, yes. did you know they actually, for the first year, they had a dog on each submarine? Yeah, it was a, it was a subwoofer. Oh, wow. Well, I do actually <laughs> have a fun fact about that. Oh, yeah, let's hear it. All right, so. If you read, if you watch the opening ceremonies, yes, right, 1959. Yep. Uh, Disneyland 59 is the opening ceremonies. They Big have one. a full ride through of the original submarine voyage. Okay. Uh, and one of the passengers on that voyage is the Shaggy Dog from the Shaggy Dog, that which also came out in 1959. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. A little, little cameo that they have yeah. in, in that. I didn't know that. Now I'm gonna have to go watch that. Yeah, it's a it's a great special. Also has dancers outside the Matterhorn. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah it, was a, it was a big year. And 59. the best parade float of all time. They have a Frontierland float that has an actual ballroom roll. Are you serious? Yes. I need to watch that. Now, I don't know if you knew this. Did you know that the e-ticket that everybody talks about yes. was invented because of the submarine ride yeah, it was so popular? Yes. He's absolutely. like, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, ooh, no, it doesn't probably. Okay, got it. <laughs> Set sail. Neptune 1, good bye, bye. I'm glad you'll be joining us tonight. But we're about to now this is exactly what, you, if you were to ride the ride, this is exactly what you would see. And also, if you happen to have like difficulty with hearing or whatever, you can request closed caption and they'll put that on for you as well. Ship reach for getting underway. Activate the aqua game. Now this room does not move at all. It's just the literally the video of the attraction. All ahead, one third. Stand by to dive. Diving station. Except that's not a little special of the... <laughs> the starfish on the screen. Flood the main ballast tanks. Flooding main tanks. Venting auxiliaries. Let's take it down. Aye, aye, Captain. Dive. Dive. True about diving planes, three degrees. True about diving planes, three degrees down. Take it out easy. Catch her at ten fathoms. Speed zero six and one half knots. Zero six and one half. Steer three zero degrees. Right three zero degrees. All ahead full. As you notice, Steady as this you is goes. going down. As we leave the coast behind and head towards open water, you'll notice that this is a popular spot for divers searching for exotic fish. Right rudder, two zero degrees. The fish world has always been considered a silent habitat, but now, thanks to remarkable advances in marine technology, we can use instruments such as our sonar hydrophones to actually hear the fish talk. Once you say a hydrophone, that starts moving right there. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Bye! Crikey! Shall I enter any of this into the log? No, mate, forget it. Nobody would believe it anyway. 
We better take her up before we have a run in with a sea serpent or an encounter with a mermaid. That's the sea serpent, the old sea serpent right there. You see the head. When they're right, I'll talk about it at the end. Approaching out. Nautical expl exploration, marine observation. That spells Nemo. And I just want to show you, there's plenty of room. Like if you're if you're in a mobility device, a wheelchair, a electric convenience vehicle, there's plenty of room for you to be, a, be in here. Easy, easy, easy. When the ride opened in 1959, Walt Disney enjoyed telling people that he had, he had the eighth largest submarine fleet in the world, which was technically true at that time. The submarines here were actually submarines. Um, and but at this nowadays having only eight submarines in your fleet isn't that big of a deal but back then he was like the eighth largest fleet commander and i just found out talking to them they're not called the pilot they're not called the skipper they're called the helmsman that's the person who's driving as the helmsman now when the ryan opened in 1959 the submarines were like a were gray it's a gray and it, they were changed in the 1980s now, what I don't know is I can't quite find out exactly when they were changed. In the 80s, they were painted yellow, as in a yellow submarine. The reason behind it was is they wanted it to be, the ride to move away from wartime because it looked like wartime submarines when they were the, that gunmetal gray. They wanted it to be more of a research vessel, so they chose the color yellow, which is awesome because I'm a huge Beatles fan. And of course, you know, we all know we all live in a yellow submarine. I hate the dumb thing. I want to paint it green. That's not the lyrics, but anyways, they were painted yellow in the 1980s. I don't know exactly when the 1980s. I'm getting conflicting reports on that. If you happen to know, put it down in the comments down below because I would really like to know when they were started painted, uh, painted yellow. They also renamed all the submarines in the 80s when they repainted them yellow. Uh, they went from uh, like wartime names like Sea Wolf to more like research names, except for the Nautilus. They've always kept the Nautilus name. The submarine has an interesting history because in 1998, they shut it down. The ride was completely shut down. They didn't reopen it until 2007. And at that time, there's a lot of speculation that we're not going to bring it back. Uh, Disney made an animated film called uh, the Atlantis. And there's some speculation at the time that this is gonna become the new Atlantis attraction. But that film didn't do very well, it kind of bombed. So they just kept it closed. But when Finding Nemo came out, I think in 2003, it was so popular, the fans were like, redo it, redo it. So they ended up redoing, uh, retheming this ride and reopening it in 2007. When it reopened in 2007, it was immensely popular. People are so happy to have it back. Now, this ride though is the most expensive ride Disney has to operate here at Disneyland. It's very expensive. The operational costs are very high. When the pandemic happened and they shut it down, everybody thought it was never coming back. Rumors like rampant, running rampant, saying they'll never reopen up the submarine because it's in a closed submarine. They'll never reopen it. It's gonna be closed forever. It did reopen though in 2022. They reopened it back up and it's been running ever since. So a lot of times people though, they talk about which attractions could go at Disney. Like if you had to get rid of attraction, Autopia and Nemo Submarine Voyage are usually to the top of the list. When the ride first opened, they had real mermaids, real mermaids, sitting out in the water. It was actresses. They put on like a mermaid outfit. They go sit out there and they pretend like they're combing their hair or whatnot. They got paid $1.35 an hour. It's about maybe equivalent to about $15 an hour um, back then. But they only lasted for about four years. They had a lot of problems because, dun, dun, dun. They, uh, it was very toxic, all the chlorine in the, in the water and the diesel fumes from the sub. A lot of the girls said they lost a lot of their hair. I've also heard that they, on occasion, they would have uh, teenage boys would try to jump in the water and swim out to the girls, to the mermaids. <laughs> I don't know if that one's true or not, but I've heard that's true. And apparently it would cause a huge block, blockage here because a lot of uh, men and boys would stop to look at the mermaids sunbathing. Now, I was telling you when we watched it from the, the Nemo observation room, I, and I kind of pointed a sea serpent. The original ride, before they redid it, at the end of the ride, you would see a mermaid and a sea serpent. What they did is they just put coral on top of the sea serpent. You can see it kind of like the, goes like waves like this. And you can still see it, it's like it has a little forked tongue coming out as an old remnants of the original ride. 
Now the submarine truly never goes all the way under the water. So sometimes people have a fear like, what if like a window blew out and it spilled up with water? Uh, you still have tons of have tons of air on top of the. Uh, it's never happened. It's never going to happen. But it doesn't. It wouldn't fill all the way with water because the water level doesn't go above the top of the submarine. So you you just be like standing there treading water. Not a, not a big deal at all. Now right there, bubbles in liquid have to go up. Right. That's bubbles go up in liquid. And that's what happens is when you go through that submarine. Let's right now it's gonna go through all those bubbles. The bubbles are gonna go up around the windows, giving the illusion that you're going down. It's a very effective illusion to make it look like the submarine is diving deeper and deeper and deeper when it's actually just on track, just rolling along. Even though maybe some people are like, oh, I don't know if I like it or not, the submarine, right? It's still very, very popular. Oh my gosh. I would say this. It's a very fun attraction for little kids. I know a lot of times as adults, we just want to skip it. Like, ah, oh, we're going on a lot. But for little kids, it's very magical because they really believe that they're going underwater and having this exploring and they feel like they've been in a submarine and that is magical here at Disney. I love that they pull that off. By the way, hit the subscribe button. Wait a minute. Did you hit the like button yet? All right, all right, all right. Hit the subscribe button and uh, you guys are amazing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I gotta, talk, I gotta find this spot where I can talk to you. Ooh, it's very bright, but I think we'll be fine. I just wanna say this. I'm talking to you and you might think I can't be talking to you. I am. I want you to listen. I think you are amazing and you make the world a better place. Did you know that? You absolutely do. If you are sad and suffering from a little depression or feeling a little overwhelmed or maybe having anxiety, take a deep breath, let that out and know in your heart how amazing you are. You make the world better. And I am talking to you and I absolutely mean it. I think you're wonderful. All right, guys, I'll see you in our next video. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.